Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I just got back from church. Now, I want to elaborate just a little bit more on the effect of emotional scars on our lives. You know, one of my friends, she and I were talking yesterday on the phone. She shared an insight with me that I had never, ever thought of. It's like you think of it in a certain uh, perspective, but the way she dealt it out, it made me think beyond where I had ever thought about it before. This is what it is. I think it's a deep insight. I always wonder, always have and always do. I always wonder why so many born again Christians who have a serious, real relationship and connection with God, why they don't seem to get the inner healing that is so available to all of us. And she said one thing. She said, maybe because that was very important to you, you pursued it. And many people don't pursue it because they don't see how important it is to get the healing. And I understood from her saying that, that many of us think, well, I've always been this way. People just have to get used to it. I'm used to it just the way it is. One of my many idiosyncrasies. But what we don't get is that some of the issues we have, we don't have to live with for the rest of our lives. Other people don't have to put up with it, and we don't have to deal with it. But if it's not important to us, if it's not that big of a deal, we truly will not pursue God for that healing. And we will have that attitude, that short temper. We will have the tendency to have misunderstandings with people, to be suspicious, to be untouchable to be out of reach, whatever the case may be, to be on guard, nervous around people, whatever the case is, or, or, or having issues with, having trust issues for that matter. So we don't get that all, most of that comes from unresolved issues. And unresolved issues comes from not being healed, not being totally free from past offenses and past hurts. So this is what I want to ask you. How long? How long is this going to go on with you before you finally see it as important as it really is? See, sometimes what we don't get is if we don't see something clearly, we think, okay, we don't see it clearly, but I can see it's not a big deal. And we don't see what we're really missing. And there's a lot that we can miss. My father told me years ago when he was younger, in his late 50s, he, that was young for him, when he was in his late 50s, the doctor finally prescribed him reading glasses. Now, he never needed visual glasses because his sight was pretty good. But when the doctor gave him the reading glasses after giving him all the tests and everything and, you know, and fitting the glasses to his visual needs, when he put the glasses on, he was amazed. He was like, <laughs> I thought I was seeing good all this time. Look at all that I've been missing. He had no idea how limited his vision had become over the years, gradually, so gradually that he didn't really take that much notice. Now, what I want to say to you is when emotional scars blur your vision, when emotional scars dull your senses, when emotional scars limit your abilities, and it happens over time and it's gradual, we are oftentimes the last ones to realize 
just how much we have lost, how much damage we have gained along the way, and how many limits those scars have put on our lives and our abilities. We don't see the damage. We don't get how much has been done. Ergo, we don't see that much of a need for a change. He said that when he looked through those glasses, he was amazed at the difference. And he said, how could I miss? How could I not know that I needed glasses that badly? How could I not see that? It's slow. It's gradual. Mm. Here, let me give you another example. <clears throat> Years ago, when I was in ICU, I was at around 300, at or above 300 pounds. The doctors told me I had, I had re retained so much fluid that they said fluid weight just piles up on you. No matter what you do, if the fluid is not being forced out of your system, you're just going to gain weight. Well, I, when I would stand and talk to someone, I'd lean. I'd want to find a chair and sit down. And it really was, it was a strain to walk far. It was, I would get tired and winded. I was just thinking that was the heart thing that they talked about. I didn't recognize that it was the weight because I carried it for so long. You see what I mean? Weight gain is a gradual thing. You don't see it one minute, you look this way, the next minute you look like, you know, the Pillsbury Doughboy. You don't see the difference like you do when you lose. I don't know why that is, but you don't. Maybe we're in denial. Whatever it is, we don't see it. So here I am walking. Now this morning, for example, I did something I would not have been able to do. I ran almost half a block's distance. I wouldn't have been able to do that when I came out of ICU. When I came out of ICU, I could barely make it to the driveway. I could barely make it there. And I was like, oh my God, I need to sit. I need something to lean on. I felt like I was going to collapse because it had gotten that bad. Now we don't see it. We don't get it. I don't know what it is about it when we're in the middle of a crisis and, and everything in us is recoiling from the damage that has been done down through the years. We don't realize how dangerous that damage is. Now I'm gonna stand up for a second. I want you to see something. Okay. I'm going to push this back so I can stand in view of the camera. Now, when I was walking years ago, coming out of ICU, I would literally have to take my time. I didn't realize how the weight had burdened my joints, my whole system. I didn't realize it. And... The idea, even in church, having to stand for worship, I was immediately ready to sit down. I would stand a few seconds and I'd sit down. And I, I just could not sustain that. Well, dum diddy dum dum didn't get that it was the weight that was pulling me down. I didn't get it. I was thinking it was the crisis that I was in. It was the uh, fluid around the heart and in the lungs and all of that, and it had me winded, so naturally I was tired. No. When I started losing the weight, thanks to the Lord, and I got down by 60 pounds and 70 pounds, 80 pounds and 90 pounds, I noticed that my mobility had gotten much easier. Listen to this. There are things that I could do in the shower that I couldn't do in 2016. There were things, if I went to the store, 
There were times in the middle of the shopping I'd have to find somewhere to sit down. It was strenuous. Now, a lot of people who carry weight for a long time, they're, they're sensitive about it. They don't want to hear people harp on it. I'm not harping about weight. I'm harping about what the Bible calls the sins and the weights that so easily beset us. See, when your emotions are laden, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, what happens is when we allow ourselves to accumulate damages from life, from relationships, from offenses, from abuse, whatever the case is, and we don't appropriate God's healing and deliverance and get rid of all that weight, the weight affects how we relate to people. The weight affects how we can deal with relationships. Many relationships are short term because our fuse is so short, we can't sustain a, a years and decades of friendships. Because we're so scarred, we're so damaged, we're so sensitive, so touchy, that the smallest things can send us into a spiral, into a tizzy, can set us off into an explosion from emotional damage. And we can't sustain the heaviness that life brings on us, that some of the responsibilities we can't even handle well because we're so busy dealing with our own emotional strains and weights and struggles and hurts that we can't manage life and its vicissitudes. We can't manage people because it's people that have done the damage to us. So the longer we live, the further away we pull back. It's too heavy. It's too much to handle. It's too complicated. My nerves can't take all that. Well, your nerves would be able to take a lot more if the weight that you carry was gone. Just like I know if I lose another 30 or 40 pounds, I'll be able to run around the block rather than barely run a half a block. I'll be able to run around the block and not be so winded. I know that. But see, some of you don't realize the level of freedom you could have. You won't realize it until you get it. I never knew when I was living an unsaved life that peace was a reality. I thought peace was a pipe dream. I thought true love and goodness was a fairy tale. It was nice to think about it, to make you feel warm and fuzzy, but I didn't think it was real. You know, you hear all this stuff about what God can do in your life. It seems so far-fetched when your life is full of trash, when your life is full of clutter and your mind is bogged down and twisted up with all kind of snarled up, tangled up, messed up emotions and memories and bitterness and ah, oh, it really makes, it, it makes for so much disillusionment that it pretty much stifles all of your hope. It trashes your dreams. It, it, it stops you from trying in a lot of areas of your life. Because you're so afraid of disappointment, you figure, well, if I don't try, I'm right where I am. I know where I am. I'm comfortable here. You've learned to manage the pain. That's pain management. But imagine a life with no pain. Imagine a life with no limits. You can do what you want to do when you want to do it, and you don't have to worry about, am I going to have a heart attack? 
Am I going to fall? Am I going to get dizzy and faint? Because this is too much of a strain to put one foot in front of the other. The same way with emotions, you don't have to worry about, am I going to haul off and knock somebody out and kill them eventually and end up doing time in prison? See, emotional scars can literally blind you. It's called blind rage. Mm. Blind rage can have you come to yourself while you look down at a puddle of blood and your loved one laying in the middle of it wondering how did they get there? Because you, you, you zoned out so far during your emotional hissy fit and your, your temper tantrum that you, all the anger that was built up down through the decades did that through your hands. And you don't even remember doing it. You know you got mad. You know you got hot up under the collar. But that's all you remember. Till you come back to yourself. Oops. What do you do now? Because you're going to have to do time. You're going to have to go to trial. You're going to have to live with what you did for the rest of your life. Now you have no more loved one to get angry with. Now what do you do? That's called that's what you call self-destruct mode. And all that comes from emotional scars that you think are no big deal. You just keep sweeping it up under the carpet because you don't want to deal with it. Why do you not want to deal with it? Because you know you are going to have to feel something. And you don't, God forbid, no, no, I felt it once, I don't want to feel it again. And sometimes God will take you, if you allow him, he'll take you to the point of that pain. When you get to the point of that pain, you're going to feel it, baby. But once he deals with it, it's gone. No longer, you won't feel that ever again. But because you won't allow him to get in and yank that thing out by the root, you have to live with that crap for the rest of your life. And you wonder, where is we real joy, real peace, real freedom? Does that really exist? You know why you wonder? You have yet to experience it. Why do you yet to experience it? Because you're still living with all your turmoil and all your clutter from all the years of mount up pain. And you have just learned to manage it. You're a functional, emotional cripple. But you can function with it. You can hold down a job and pay your bills. But you're barely existing in your life. You're not even living. You don't even know what it feels like to really be alive. Hmm. Emotional pain, emotional wounds, emotional scars, psychological damage dulls the senses. And it even hinders you from enjoying the good things of life. Do you really want to go that way for the rest of your life? Is that okay with you? <laughs>